I'm Derek Miller. I'm the team lead for RPIW number 35, and that's the uh, time of registration of the chemo patient until the initiation of the chemotherapy. So this is our standard combination worksheet of our presentation. Again, everything will be done in 20 minutes. Again, a picture of our team here. Again, the thorn between all the roses there. <laughs> we, have a, we, have, we have a small team. Again, uh, with our KPO support, the support there was uh, seven of us. So again, our, our project form is again increasing the lead time for chemotherapy patients from registration to the initiation of chemotherapy treatment. Um, again, simple flow process flow on the, on the bottom there. Patient registers, uh, they enter chemotherapy, they're assessed, uh, mixing uh, occurs, and uh, eventually the medication is delivered to be administered. So here's our value stream map, and then we've got two client flows. So basically the client flow is they come into the into the building. They wait in registration anywhere from 16 seconds to 30 minutes. Again, there's, these people are immunocompromised. They're not well to begin with. They're standing in line with emergency room patients, other sick people, people with pneumonia, things like that. And sometimes they're getting bumped by emergency room patients as well. They finally get registered. They venture on to uh, the chemotherapy department. They're assessed. The nurse makes that call to uh, the pharmacy department. And then there's a bit of a wait, again, necessary wait granted, where the medications uh, are mixed up and then delivered. So again, uh, two flows, the client flow is the top, and then the medication flow on the bottom. So the client flow, given the, uh, the lead time for the, uh, the whole process is anywhere from 66 minutes to 96 minutes, taking into consideration that 16 seconds or 30 minutes of uh, time of registration. Uh, cycle time, <clears throat> sort of value added time for the uh, medication flow, is uh, 45, 13, I think. Uh, and uh, for the uh, registration, for the client flow, anywhere from uh, 13, 14, the value added times 13, 14. Just some P PQA data. Again, just, uh, again, the hours of service in the chem chemotherapy department is uh, 8.30 to 4.30, uh, two registered nurses, they have five chemo chairs and, uh, and one head. And the, uh, the pharmacy department, again, there's one pharmacist that uh, has part of her day assigned to chemotherapy and one technician that's assigned full-time to, to chemotherapy and a runner as well. <coughs> Here's our target sheet again. And again, we'll talk about this in further down the line with other people. But again, just uh, getting into our lead time of uh, one hour and six minutes, 29 seconds to one hour and 36 minutes and 13 seconds. We not measured our defects at six, or of course our target is to get to zero for that. Uh, one thing to note as well on our uh, distance travel for the pharmacy tech, that's based on five trips per day. Uh, but <clears throat> it was 845 feet per trip. And then our, just a calculation of attack time, again we got an attack time of 96 minutes, again based on an eight and a half hour day, wherever the department shuts down for 30 minutes when they go on their break together in the morning. Good afternoon, my name is Jennifer Brewer and I'm one of two chemotherapy nurses that work in the hospital here. Um, before our 5S project, our cupboards were crowded and cluttered with supplies. Product was stacked on top of and in front of other product. If someone was to have walked into our department to find one particular thing, they would have needed a very extensive roadmap. We have an overabundance of stock due to having to order full boxes of product that were occasionally used and simply we had too many choices. In chemotherapy we do not need three different types of band-aids. We have gone down right now to two. We have the dot bandages and we've kept our pediatric bandages. Everybody if you need a big band-aid and you come to chemo, you're getting kids band-aid until we go through that stock. So prior to the 5S we had a 5S evaluation of 1.65 with 7,600 pieces of stock. The idea sheets that we had come up with reflected the need to 5S this department. They showed an overabundance of product and other members of our team saw this as an area that could be improved upon as well. <coughs> After our 5S project, we eliminated 1,200 pieces of product although this number can will and will be improved upon. 
Since we are only a staff of two, we have agreed that while there are supplies we aren't willing to part with at this moment, if we haven't used them in six months, we will decrease that as well. We are unique in that some of the supplies we have, we utilize only once a month or once every three months, depending on certain treatments. As I stated previously, we removed 1,200 pieces of stock from chemotherapy. The cupboards aren't completely bare, but one is. <laughs> and it is a great feeling. We have also improved our post 5S evaluation score to a three. Although we do still have some labeling to do, product is easier to find, clutter is gone, and nothing is stacked on top of one another or blocking other supplies anymore. The cupboard that was hard to access is now empty and awaiting maintenance to come and remove it. <clears throat> a work standard was developed to ensure that nursing staff maintains this 5S project and a multi-skills checklist for the training of the other staff in the chemotherapy department was completed and I should have my co-worker trained by April 1st with the rest of the 5S. Hi, I'm Dory Gadette, and I was a participant on this RPSW. Um, I worked on a team that looked to improve patient flow um, to make a more efficient registration process. The problem that was identified was that patients coming to the VIC hospital for chemotherapy treatment were registering and applying to access. Patients could stand in line for up to 30 minutes prior, prior to going to the department for their treatment. Patients report that they often felt unwell and were having difficulty standing in line. Chemotherapy treatment also leaves clients compromised to infection because of the other people in the registration area. So the all 10 team members supported the idea of bypassing client access and finding a way for patients to receive chemotherapy by going directly to the department. So over the past few days, client access has been pre-registering clients in the chemotherapy department in the early morning of their appointment date. This allows patients to go directly to the department. Work standards have been developed for client access as well as the chemotherapy nurses, along with multi-skill training checklists have been initiated. So the result is that patients have been able to go directly to the chemo department and we have um, been able to save lots of time for them from their visit, which allows them to spend that time outside the hospital. So far, pre-registration has not caused additional work in either department and has made our clients very happy. Thank you. My name is Tony Sommerfeld. I am one of the pharmacists at the hospital. So I was on the team that was looking at how we would improve the flow of mixing of chemotherapy to decrease the lead time for our patients waiting for treatment. So we identified that oftentimes the patient was having to wait a significant amount of time. Uh, that reflects that our current process was to wait to mix all chemotherapy until the patient had arrived for their appointment and then nursing would call pharmacy, notify them the patient was there and then we would begin our mixing process. So this week, we were able to develop a list of medications that we are able to pre-mix ahead of time of the patient arriving. Um, this list encompasses 20 of the medications that we do provide for chemotherapy, which is about 56% of the drugs that we prepare. Uh, so this is will be mixed, granted that the patient's blood work is available and meets all parameters for treatment before they arrive at the hospital. So oh, we developed a work standard um, around which chemotherapy we would be mixing ahead of the patient arriving and how we would do that. In, in many cases, this will be mixed the day prior to the patient's appointment and that way allowing the chemotherapy to actually be delivered at 8 o'clock in the morning before the patients even arrive for their appointments that day. We also identified that there were a couple of non-hazardous drugs that the nurses prepare in the unit, um, and we can prepare those ahead of the patient arriving as well, granted all parameters are met. Um, as we are mixing drugs ahead of time, we wanted to have 
work in place for what we would do if there was a patient that did not show up for treatment or was not able to receive treatment and the drug had been mixed. So we have work standards surrounding how we would handle those situations as well. Um, very happy to say that this has really improved the workflow in the pharmacy. It's allowing the techs to minimize the number of times they have to garb up to go into the sterile hood and, uh, mix and decrease the time uh, spent by the pharmacist checking as well. And also improve the less of the time a lot of patients are waiting. We also identified a problem was that when the chemotherapy was ready to be checked, we there was a delay sometimes in the pharmacist going back to actually check those medications. Uh, the current past uh, up until this week, the process was that the technician had to actually remove their gloves, come out of the hood, make a phone call to the front. That phone call could be picked up by any pharmacist. Sometimes the message wasn't passed on. So now the technician has a button right in their um, sterile hood that they can push. They can push it a little bit before they're done in anticipation of the time it takes the pharmacist to come back. That bell alarms at the front of the pharmacy, alerting all the pharmacists in that area that there's chemotherapy to check. So if the designated pharmacist is busy with something else, someone can quickly go back there and do that for her. So we actually, um, our pre-RPIW uh, verification time was actually 14 minutes and three seconds, and we decreased that to two minutes and 12 seconds. So a huge, uh, huge improvement there. Um, the other problem that we uh, solved was the multiple trips throughout the day um, delivering chemotherapy to the chemo department by the technicians. Oftentimes during the day, they would make five or six trips, and as we heard, that was I think like 845 feet or something per trip. Uh, we have a spaghetti diagram, so we're not even on the same level of the hospital, so it was lots of times, lots of trips running back and forth. Um, now, with the pre-mixing and the standard of one delivery time of all pre-mixed chemo once in the morning, we're able to reduce the number of trips significantly, which has improved the workflow for the technician significantly and freed their, a lot of their time up. Um, so, around all of this uh, stat work standards, we've developed the multi-skills um, training checklist for all of the pharmacists working in the department, all of the technicians, as well as any of the nursing. And I just want to comment that I know change can sometimes be difficult for staff, and I was just really impressed with all of our pharmacy staff and how open they were to these changes. And I think it's been a very positive example of how lean can not only work to improve patient care in the hospital, but also improve their workflow in their day. Good afternoon. I'm Nell Heckel, and I'm a patient rep. Uh, I've been interested in uh, chemo patients for a long time. That's the reason I chose this particular RPIW. Speaking to some of the patients, some of the comments they made were, and I quote, because I came in fairly early in the morning, there isn't usually a lineup, but I am happy of the changes in registration. Love not waiting in the lineup register, have waited up to 45 minutes to register, then to wait for the chemo on top of this. Didn't even have enough time to drink my coffee today. It was wonderful. Usually I have to come about a half hour early because I have to wait in line often, maybe due to the time of my appointment. I also have mobility issues, so standing in line is difficult. This was really good for me today. Thank you. Our team also put together a little pamphlet uh, with some info for the uh, new chemo patients. We put a little map at the very front from the front to the chemo department. And we've included uh, the change in the registration. And if there was any changes in the patient's name, address, phone number, etc., they should let the chemo patient know. We've included lab information, uh, side effects, um, also free parking, um, drop-offs at the front of the hospital, access to the wheelchairs that are <coughs> available, and there's only one visitor per patient, 
and the Victoria Hospital is a scent-free area, so patients and visitors are asked to refrain from wearing scented perfumes and lotions because they're having problems. So every effort is made to have uh, the patient's treatment completed as timely as possible. So we hope this information will alleviate any anxiety that the patient might have. Thank you. So on uh, Monday after our just in time training in the afternoon, we went on the waste walk through the uh, chemotherapy department and the pharmacy department. So we came up with uh, 34 areas of, of what we consider waste in these departments. And uh, throughout the week, we worked hard at getting, uh, getting this reduced and uh, came up with, we uh, removed 18 of them this morning. So uh, we're only at sitting at 16 now. Uh, next is our, uh, this is our pre, uh, Percent load chart again. A uh, fair bit of time there for the medication uh, mixing and verification, and, and a little bit for the, the prep and the transport. And then our post uh, post time is uh, significantly increased. So if you notice on the last sheet, there was the cycle time was 45 minutes and 13 seconds. We're now showing 20 minutes and 20 seconds. <clears throat> again, uh, our pre uh, standard work combination uh, sheets show the, the two flows again, showing the, the fair bit of wait time again. Those the 51 minutes here, and uh, now the uh, post uh, showing that they're getting their assessment and their treatment, and they're basically virtually no wait, only six minutes throughout the process for the client. And our target sheet, uh, final target sheet again, some things to note: note our uh, lead time again for the uh, patient uh, patient registration line again is a 72 percent. Uh, Decrease again, it's uh, 20, 18 minutes and 44 seconds. And uh, our defects, uh, even though we wanted to get down to zero, we got down to one. And our uh, walking distance for the patient is very important. Where they were walking 151.5 feet uh, prior to this, they're now down to 64.5, so uh, about 85 feet. <coughs> And our new uh, Valley Street map, again, a lead time of 31.42, so we significantly down from the 66 to 96 minutes. Hi, I'm Nola Tucker, I'm a sub-team lead for RPIW number 35. And uh, this is our newspaper. We've managed to um, complete a couple of things, though we still have a few things to work on. Uh, we're still working on the distance that some of the patients have to walk from the front of the hospital, like after they park to get into the building, which has uh, been a struggle for some of them. Uh, we still have some work to do on our 5S in terms of maintenance and some of the other work with getting some of the supplies down a bit further. Uh, and we still have some multi-skill training to do in some of the departments around the pharmacy flow and the um, uh, registration. <coughs> The workshop summary and these are some of the gains that we've had our patients have expressed uh, some real appreciation for the reduction in time that it's taking for their treatment we're down to about 35 to 65 minutes for each patient uh, treatment uh, we've also eliminated the, the need for them to stand in line which has been huge for a lot of them we've reduced the lead time for the patients receiving their chemotherapy we've re uh, decrease the distance traveled by the pharmacy tech on a daily basis when they're uh, dropping off the meds. And we've improved the workflow for the pharmacist and the pharmacy techs through the pre meds process. Uh, the lessons learned here is all about communication. I think most teams feel that way. It's really important to communicate with all the different departments that you touch. You're not going to have success if people don't understand what's going on. So that's been huge for us. This is the uh, work implementation plan, so we'll be sharing this with our process owners, and um, so we've got a little bit of work left to do. And this is our thank you to all the departments. We really want to thank Cindy and Charity and Client Access. Um, they were a big part of making um, our, our patient flow work. Um, Jen and Lori have been um, fabulous in the chemo department. Um, as well as Lori and Sean, who have been our process owners. Um, all the staff in the pharmacy department were really open to the idea of change and it, they were great to work with. We have to thank maintenance and materials management as well. They've helped us throughout the week. And a big thank you to Colleen and Deb. They've been just fabulous. 
And on behalf of um, my team lead and myself, Derek, we really want to thank our team. They've been hard workers, and I think this leader has some really significant improvements.